Welcome to Marriage and Life Stories with Kansime. Having you once again uh, is a great joy to me. And uh, I want to welcome all the new uh, guests to this channel. Thank you so much. And uh, kindly, if you like this video, please subscribe and uh, like and leave us a comment. And to all the returning guests, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. And if you want to send me an email or, or contact me, I want you to go to my that section which has about. If you come to the channel uh, where it's it's reading to my main channel where it's it has home, it has video, it has uh, playlist, it has everything. The last portion is called uh, it, it's labeled about. So on the about there is my email address. And uh, kindly use that email address to send me uh, your inquiries um, or drop me an, your number, then I'll call you back. And so today we are looking at a topic, understanding teenagers, uh, the fears, the fears these teenagers have that spell, that shape their behaviors. And let me tell you, number three will shock you because many parents do not, uh, do not, uh, take it as a very serious thing, yet it is the, the biggest, biggest fear that has either built or destroyed these young people, depending on how the parents handled this. Okay, so uh, teenagers, we basically call them teenagers, but sometimes they even range from preteen up to, up to that time when someone is still your child and at that level before they even gain um, the full, full, full confidence. Just a minute, let me check on this one. Okay. At that time, let's say I've called them teenagers here, but it is ranging from uh, 10 years up to around uh, 25 years. Now, during that time, the, the parents sometimes fail to understand these teenagers. They behave so weird. Uh, they can be angry. They can exhibit a lot of stress, stress character, stress behavior. They can, they behave in the most uh, difficult way. Uh, you know, they will run away from home. They, they, they are... They don't want to ask for you don't they don't want you to ask for anything about them sometimes they will refuse to eat sometimes they will lock themselves up in their rooms and you know these behaviors are like so weird what do what mistakes do parents make the mistakes that parents make is um, maybe I should share the mistakes that parents make while these teenagers are in these modes last after sharing the, the fears of these teenagers. Number one, these teenagers, as they grow up, they fear rejection so much. This world rejects, you know, the children go out there, they are rejected by the peers. Sometimes they, they don't uh, fit in in the class, so they are rejected. I know uh, one of uh, the, the children I used to teach, I am a professional teacher as well, uh, one of the children I used to teach would run to me and she would tell me, uh, Teacher Grace, these people, they don't want me to play with them. They don't want me to share uh, anything with them. Uh, even when I give them, they refuse. Now, this child used to even steal things from home. You know, she used to steal things from home to come and please the people who had rejected her. Now, when a child goes back home and uh, they discover she has stolen, the parents don't understand why this child is stealing. And so they go ahead and beat this child. They treat this child in the most difficult way, call the child names. But guess what? A child needs you to sit down and ask them why they have stolen. And they will be honest with you. They will tell you, I wanted to share with my friends because they are not, well, I'm not just fine stealing, but find out why the child has stolen. Find out why this child uh, just came from school. She doesn't want to talk. She just sleeps. 
and you know she's so broken. Now, at this stage, a child who is rejected, sometimes they're even rejected by their own parents. You look up to the other child who uh, does so much work, who is so smart, who, uh, you know, who is so good in everything. And then this one who doesn't understand, in most cases, is very much rejected. Now, let me tell you, I'm a teacher and my children call me Teacher Grace, the best teacher in the whole world. Why? I understand where they're coming from. I have ever been rejected. But the children who are rejected, in most cases, they turn out to be the best people as the future turns out. I was not the smartest, you know. I wasn't the smartest in doing things at home. And so I was always, you know, that child that they look up and she's just there. I wasn't the smartest in making relationships in class. And so I had very few friends. And guess what? I kept to myself. People thought I was so quiet, uh, maybe. But no, I was dealing with rejection from, from the other people. And so your children fear rejection so much. Now, my policy in raising my children is that if I sense one of my children is having issues with school, I will do everything within my power to love that child and give them that feel that even if you hate me, all the love in the world my mother has given me. And I take special attention in those children. There may be one or two who love my children. I take special attention in knowing who they are, in appreciating them, and giving them uh, the love. You know, appreciating them for loving my children. They don't have to. And if my child tells me they love someone, I also get to know who my child loves and I will, you know, shower much more love amongst them. So number one, the young people fear rejection. And if they fear rejection, they will steal to please, they will hide away, they will be depressed and they will be suicidal. Number two, now let me tell you number three will shock you. Number two, the children fear failure. They fear to fail in doing schoolwork. And so when the teachers abuse them, some teachers are not really kind. When teachers abuse them and, and they have really treated them so bad and the, and the other children are laughing at them, then it turns out that they don't want school. Now, when your child is running away from school, uh, is not, don't add on to their trouble. The mistake parents make is that when a child fails, they really add so much uh, abuse, so much hate, so much, uh, you know, calling them all sorts of names. Don't add on to their pain. They are really feeling the failure they are experiencing. They don't know whether they will make it to Gayaza, to Budo. They don't know whether they will make it to King's College, uh, you know, okay, Kisubi, Intare. They don't know. But guess what? You have already told them they are losers. I can guarantee you all the kids who are just average children, not the first class, they make it in life more than the first class. Yes, the first class, they also make it. But check out the average children. They normally do better in life because they know how to work hard. They are not so full of themselves. Their character is good. So a child who fears failure will always avoid um, situations that will cause them failure. And so they will turn away from school. They will refuse to do work at home. They will always find an excuse and they will be rebellious because they don't want to go in a situation that will make them to fail. Now, number three, which is the biggest that parents always miss is they fear body shaming. We are in a season where everything about the girls is about the, the waist, the tiny waist, the, the well-shaped hips, the calves, the well laid up behind, you know, the, the breasts are turning, are standing very well, the body is well toned, the face, the face is so, you know, well-shaped and smooth, the eyes are like, that is the standard that the world has offered. For the boys, they are looking at, you know, you must have six pack, whatever that is, six pack, and uh, you must have broad shoulders. And this leads to body shaming. 
I'll repeat that. You young people fear body shaming. They will talk about their ugly legs. In my past videos, I shared with you when I was growing up, how they told me I have stick legs and an ugly face and, and, you know, dark feet. Body shaming is so terrible. They experience it at home. Some parents abuse. You know, they talk about a big stomach. They talk about fat bodies. They siblings can abuse. You know, you have an ugly nose. Your eyes are small. The peers will abuse. Now, when all this body shaming comes to your young people, they will be angry. They will be annoyed at everyone. They will lose their confidence. They, they will start um, eating food and forcing themselves to vomit it out, and thereby developing a disease called bulimia. They will be super thin. And when they are body shamed, some of them even go and take uh, drugs so that they can deal with the pain they are experiencing. Some of them take um, unhealthy thinning pills. And when all these things are happening, their parents don't know. So what should parents do? One, never put your children on pressure. Even if your child is bad, your child is not behaving so well, don't put them on extra pressure. And don't pressure them to tell you. The best thing you can do is right from childhood, affirm your child. Tell, let them know, even if they, they are badly behaved and the whole world is rejecting them, you will never reject them. Now, it doesn't matter what my child does. If you come to tell me how bad my child is, how spoiled she is, I'll tell you, I will manage her. And I will work with my child in that difficult circumstance, in the troubles they are experiencing, in the pains they are going through, in the bad behaviors they are experiencing. I will be with them. I will be with them. And when the time has come for them to walk out, they will be super strong. They will be excellent children. I will never partner with the devil to abuse my children. I will never. When the world has turned them down, I will stand with them. When they are not ready to tell me what it is, I will tell them, whenever you're ready, talk to me. And so parents, please, don't destroy your children. They already have so much trouble from the world. If you like this video, kindly subscribe. Like. Your like on A in this video means a lot to me. Help me out by liking. Help me out by subscribing if you have not subscribed yet. And if you're new, kindly subscribe, like, and give a comment. For now, till we meet again, bye-bye. God bless you. Thank you so much.